order. Um, if we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. Roll call. Councilor Donovan. Present. Councilor Rowan. Here. Councilor Foley. Here. Councilor Clare. Here. Councilor Hayes. Here. Councilor Castle. Here. Chairman Bayline. Here. Um, before we move into, I'm sorry? No, it's really loud. Oh, well, I had somebody say that they couldn't hear me. Um, before we move into the public hearing, I just wanted to uh, give a kind of high level overview of where we are, why we are here, because this is a special meeting of the council. So at our last meeting, which was June 20th, the town council had its first reading on the proposed budget um, or on the um, um, re-proposed budget um, after the referendum cycle. There were three um, adjustments um, in that um, primarily. Those three adjustments are to reduce um, the amount of um, expenditures by $307,000 total. $236,000, it was recommended that $236,000 come from the school budget and $71,000 come from the town's budget. In addition, um, we also set the date of the refer referendum question, which will be on June 25th. And we also had an amendment that um, directed that in the event that we do receive educational funding uh, from the state of Maine, that it would be uh, proportioned and put into the reserve, um, the school's reserve fund. Um, so that is where we are. We did have a workshop earlier, if you were able to attend. Um, and so uh, the manager, as well as the superintendent, gave brief um, opening remarks about where those adjustments might come from. Just to be clear, the school department um, isn't prepared to provide details regarding the adjustments because the school board has not had an opportunity to meet and have that discussion. Um, so th that is their authority to make that adjustment um, if they are uh, recommending that. And that is scheduled, I believe that meeting is scheduled for July 5th immediately following the town council's meeting. Um, is that correct, Madam Chair? Thank you. Um, so tonight is the public hearing. Um, for this. Um, the council, by the way, did also agree that we wanted to separate all three activities, the first reading, public hearing, and the second reading into three different events, which compresses the schedule, um, but it's what we need to do um, in order to uh, take care of our town. So with that, um, I also wanted to mention that, because um, this is legally required, and that's why we did it this way, there won't be any council member comments at the end. I do have a couple of announcements regarding the process. Um, but we will reserve those comments and the, our questions um, for the second reading. So with that, I would like to um, open up order number 17-063. It's a 7 p.m. public hearing on the fiscal year 2018 municipal and school budget as presented to us by the town manager. If you'd like to speak, this is your opportunity. Each person has three minutes to speak. Um, if you could please come to the podium, uh, provide your name and address so that the clerk can record, um, record that into the record. We would appreciate that. And with that, I'd like to open up the public hearing. And if you would like to speak, please go to the podium. Keep in mind that you're welcome to line up as well, because it goes a little bit faster when we have that. I'm Susan Hamill, and I live at 3 Bay Street. And um, I just want to make um, a few, just a few comments. Um, we need to be realistic right now and we need to get a budget passed. Um, I think that the magnitude of the, of the defeat demands more than just a token decrease in the budget. A cut that would bring the overall mill rate up no more than two and a half percent I think makes sense. No one really knows what the, what the number is that will work. But long term we really have our work cut out for us. I think that we, we need to roll up our sleeves we need to plan better for cap our large capital projects and get our total t town debt down. And we need to do this keeping our mill rate at an acceptable level. So to do that, I think it's three things that need to happen. The first is that we need to project out more than one year. Um, this would allow us to see the impact of short-term fixes like using the fund balance to plug holes in the budget, approving a new position, um, to be filled part way through the year. Uh, many organizations have a rolling three-year planning cycle, which they update each year. And in the perfect world, I'd like to see the town budget increase held to no more than the percentage increase in the total assessed value of the town. 
and a level mill rate. In years when the economy is growing, like this year, we could have comparable increases in the town budget with no increase in the mill rate. In years when there's an economic downturn, we might have to actually reduce the town budget. The second thing is that we really need to reduce our total debt altogether. I mean, it's just, it's got to happen. The mill rate and the total debt go hand in hand. Though we may have one of the lowest mill rates in our area, we certainly have the highest per capita debt. We need to stop bonding items, which most towns put in the operating budget, and stop shifting items back and forth from operating to capital budgets, depending on how much we need to cut out of the, out of the operating budget. The final thing is I, I think it would make sense to hire an outside consultant to come in and review the cost efficiency and performance of various departments, starting with the school. This makes even more sense when we're looking at stagnant or possibly decreasing enrollments. When Portland did this a few years ago, they reorganized several departments and found some major cost savings. We simply have to get our budget under control. These annual budget battles that we fight every year are just such a waste of time, not only for the town staff and the school staff, but the public. Um, we are looking at a possible bond issue right now for the public safety building in a few months. And not once has the discussion of that come up as we talk about this <coughs> year's budget. The fact that it hasn't come up, I think, really shows how broken the annual budgeting process really is. Anybody else would like to speak? Uh, my name is Cindy Kuick. I'm at Six Moors Point Road in Scarborough. The issue I wanted to address was the one town, one budget discussion that seemed to be going on and maybe where some of these cuts were going to come from. Uh, my husband about six years ago was furloughed from his job. And if anybody knows about furloughed, basically that means his seniority number was near the bottom, so when the company had to make cuts, they went from the bottom and they went up. And it had nothing to do with his performance or his abilities. It was just simply the way that it happened. And so we had to look at our budget and we had to make adjustments. We had to look for more income, so I picked up a second job. Um, and we also had to look at cuts. And I could have looked at my husband and said, well, that was all your money that we lost, so you have to make all those cuts, right? But I didn't do that because we're a family and we work as a unit and we looked at cuts across the board. Four years later, when he was finally rehired by his old company and he had a significant increase in his income, he didn't take that money and say, ho, 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 I'm going to go buy a car, I'm going to get a motorcycle. No, we applied that to the family. We made up some of those debts that we had incurred and we budgeted again and we all enjoyed that benefit. This town, this school, as I'm sure you can see the analogy I'm going here, the school lost a huge chunk of income from the state through no fault of its own, but through the state's formula. And that money needs to be increased. There's been some increases in income in the town, but there's also costs associated with that. The town is a unit. The school department is a part of this town. To say that the school department has to absorb all of those losses when they did nothing to incur those losses is really ridiculous in my personal opinion. This town needs to absorb those losses and make a balanced budget so everybody can benefit from it. We went into this as a one town, one budget, and that was a great, great thing. I was so hopeful when I started hearing that. But I don't want it to be one town, one budget when things are sunny and positive. It's got to be one town, one budget all the time. And if by some miracle the state comes up with 55% of the budget, that means that this town as a whole will benefit from that because there'll be less money going there and hopefully we'll be able to readjust the budget. I heard that that's going to go into a fund, but I think that's only going to benefit the town in the long run. So um, in summary, in good times and bad, this town needs to work together as a unit and hitting people against each other and creating divisiveness between the departments. It's just a negative thing. I think we need to work together and I hope that we'll continue to do so tonight and going forward. Thank you. I 
if you would like to line up to speak, that would be wonderful. <laughs> My name is Jenny Jubilus, and I live at 16 Haystack Circle, and I will preface this by saying that I hate public speaking, but schools are something I'm passionate about, um, and so therefore I'm willing to get up here. So my child has, has just finished kindergarten at Pleasant Hill, and we're thrilled with the education she's received thus far. I know it's just kindergarten, but we are very excited. <laughs> However, I am dismayed, and I am extremely worried about the school budget continuing to be voted down year after year, and I'm even more concerned about the vindictive and yes, at times, very misleading rhetoric that accompanies the vote. After a discussion with several coworkers who were very educated and very informed, I am convinced that much of the community was, was misled regarding the proposed tax increase. And this coupled with an extremely low voter turnout leads me to believe that this is not a mandate to significantly cut our school budget. A 3.5% tax increase at a time when state education funding is being slashed is reasonable. And the, concurrent pro the current proposal of a 3% increase is also reasonable, but more cuts than that are very concerning. Schools are a vital force in our community, <coughs> and excellent schools improve all of our lives, increasing property values, educating our youth, and driving the economy forward. Education is the great equalizer. I've worked in numerous countries where children do not have access to a quality free public education, and poverty in these countries is a vicious cycle. Education is the most important tool to bring families out of poverty, further communities, and enhance our neighborhoods, and our children deserve the opportunity for this. Failure to adequately fund our schools will only lead to increased spending down the road as families and the economy will suffer. Everyone in my family is a product of public schools. I am a huge supporter of public schools, but I am worried about the way Scarborough is headed if the divisive rhetoric and subsequent school budget cuts continue. My family is new to the school system, and we have 12 more years in our future, so you have a long time to hear from me. <laughs> I'm worried about what our schools will look like 12 years from now if we continue down this path of divisiveness and budget cuts, and I'm also worried about what our community will look like. Our children deserve every opportunity to succeed. <clears throat> My family moved to Scarborough out of all the communities in the area, in large part due to the schools. But looking back over the past several years of budget struggles, I've come to question that decision. Please do not drive families with young children away. Continue to fund our schools, and you will continue to advance our community. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Jacqueline Perry, 215 Black Point Road. I am also a member of the Board of Education. Good evening. I want to thank you for your service. It is sometimes a thankless job, but you have stepped up, stepped up to the plate and taken on this job. I thank you for one town, one budget. I hope we can continue to accomplish this goal, but this is where the rubber hits the road. I've been a part of many budget deliberations. Here are some facts. I have had school supporters and former school board members on this council, not the present council, reduce the budget and state that it is being reduced because they didn't believe we needed a an assistant superintendent. I could give you other stories. I have had conservative counselors support items such as all-day kindergarten because they said that the superintendent board and teachers showed them that it is necessary for the education of our children. There are people who have come to this podium and said the school budget is too high when just a few years ago when they had students in school, stood here and spoke in support of the budget. The school department will live with whatever is set as the bottom line and the voter support. We do not have the same sources of revenues available to the council. Keep in mind that good schools draw people to our town. Our taxes are rising because our valuation is rising. Every dollar in income tax that is reduced in Augusta raises our property taxes. Please remember our students as you deliberate. And just an aside, there was an email that came out that talked about the teachers getting a 4.5% raise in the current contract. Well, it was negotiated at a 1% raise some people will get more because we have steps. I thank you, 
and I wish you well as you deliberate. Good evening. Uh, my name is William Bly, go by Bill. I live at 10 Ottawa Woods Road. And uh, the people that came before me were just so very well spoken and hit all the points that I was hoping to hit. So I, I'll try not to repeat myself. Um, I just want to make some observations and, and share with you some of my thoughts I have. I have to say I'm very um, distraught that we're back here again. It feels like Groundhog Day every year. And as a parent with a child going into the seventh grade, um, it's hard to see the lack of caring for what these teachers do on a daily basis. I've been here in prior town council meetings where residents have gotten up and taken out their checkbook and slapped it down and said, you know, if these parents want these services, let them write a check. We do that anyway for these kids and for these teachers because what they do is so important. And uh, a town isn't based on your police department and your fire department and your stop lights and your well-paved roads. That's not why I came to Scarborough. I moved my family here from Portland to buy a house eight and a half years ago. And we bought our dream house and we love living here. And we came here not because Scarborough is a pretty community. We can go to any pretty community. We looked at the Gunkwit. We looked at Kennebunk. We looked at many places. We came here for the reputation of the schools because public school was important. And over the years, we've watched these budget battles. And twice, we pulled our son out of public school because we were concerned about where is the school going? Where is our public school going to head? And we put him in private school. And the best blessing of that was we realized that the best education he could receive was through the Scarborough Public Schools. And we'll never look, we'll never look back at the private school again. But I am concerned going forward, if we're not going to fund these schools and pay these teachers, what's that education going to look like? And if people are concerned with their property taxes and how much they're paying, the reality is if our schools aren't funded, and they continue to slip in the state rankings, which they have. When I moved here, it was number four in some metrics. Others, it was number three. It's not there anymore, and it's not because of the jobs the teachers do. Part of it's the funding and the programs that have been cut. But property values, ultimately, if that's what people care about, are going to be severely impacted because young families will move, and other families will choose to move to other communities, and that will affect everyone's property values. A 3.5% increase is not unreasonable. And I would ask that this town council consider that. And if you want an idea, the last thing that got the people of the town of Scarborough to move on this, threaten to cut the sports. And this is coming from a prior Division I athlete. Okay? Thank you. Uh, good evening, Ben Howard, Seven Windsor Pines. Um, as many people have gotten up here before me to say uh, they're worried about cutting the school budget as they feel that it is taking away from the children and such and the quality of education. Um, since I've been following sort of the school budget and stuff, I've been doing a fair amount of research as in to whether education uh, spending more money on education actually results in better education. Um, I've stated before that uh, according to the OCE, uh, OECD countries and schools that uh, the United States spends 28% more than the 35 countries that are a part of that, uh, the part of the OECD. Yet we still do very poor in testing. Now today on short notice as I uh, wasn't really aware this meeting was happening. I've been able to find an article uh, that was a story done by NPR on April 26 of 2016, where they talk about in the 90s um, uh, regarding New Jersey, where a lawsuit known as Abbott versus Burke, the state increased spending in 31 of their poorest districts, dubbed the Ab Abbott districts. And in fact, that increased school funding for those areas to higher than the state's wealthiest areas. It goes on to say, um, though the spending increase uh, was 2.5 times the national average, there was no real evidence that 
their, um, that they were achieving goals of uh, reducing the education gap. Instead, they still found that 90% um, of high school students are not proficient in either language, arts, or math. Again, I don't think the problem is that we're not spending enough money on our students. In fact, I, I think that it may, uh, that there needs to be other routes that need to be taken and looked at. Today, um, we continue to think that solutions come by just throwing money at the problem, and I do not believe that at all. Yes, they go on in the article to say the school district was improved, that the area looked nice, but it did not change the results of the students. If we really care about our students, why do we just sit here and bicker about money instead of trying to find other solutions to find, uh, to increase the quality of education across the board for all? So I continue to say, yes, as a town, we voted down this budget. We should continue to go down this road. But in the future, and when we're trying to look at the budget now, please look at other ways to educate the students so that we can better compete with countries around the world. Thank you. <coughs> All right, I'm Sarah Mullen. I live at 55 Gunstock Road, and it will come as a shock to none of you that I am here to say I support the schools and the budget, as I've spoken at basically every single one of these for the past two months. Um, I want to echo something I said before, though, first by thanking you all because you have a really, uh, I don't envy you at all for the task you have in front of you. There's no way to know what's going to turn a no voter to a yes voter or to get someone who didn't vote to come out this time, and even if they do, whether they'll say vote yes or no. So I, yeah, I don't envy that what you have in front of you at all. But I would say that while I would certainly personally support something that was even a smaller cut than the 307,000, I think you are taking a very rational, 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 defensible position to try to stick to what you have previously said with a 3% or less increase. It's a reason to do what you're doing as opposed to just guessing, which otherwise is kind of all you can do. So I appreciate that approach. I think it's something you can stick by, um, and I certainly support it. I also support the one town, one budget approach, and I really liked the analogy that someone said before about the family and if you someone loses an income, how you spread it around and you don't make them solely responsible for the cuts. So uh, I agree with that, um, and I think that's it. So again, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hillary Durgan on Sequoia Lane. As you might suspect, I'm here to speak in support of a strong school system and thus to ask you to keep any proposed cuts to a minimum. I know that you as a town council as a whole understand the value of a healthy school system, not only because it's our responsibility and part of the social contract, but also because it's a very real factor in the valuation of our land and our homes. I appreciate you and the school board for giving us what I believe to be a very reasonable and well thought out budget for the upcoming year. But as a result of the first vote, I know that you will need to make cuts to the school budget. Um, I fear cutting too much will set us back irreparably. If we settle for a budget that is below our current services each year, how can our school system develop and keep pace with the changing world? I am well aware that in order to maintain and grow our town and our schools, I will need to absorb an increase in my taxes each year, and I accept that as being part of a responsible citizen. I hesitate to talk about percentages because, as I have observed, this divisive atmosphere that we have in Scarborough um, and really kind of in our country, I have realized that while numbers themselves don't lie, people can manipulate numbers in so many different ways that a lot of times they become irrelevant. So for me and many of my friends and neighbors, the bottom line is not necessarily how much will my taxes be going up, but instead, what will the schools and the town gain this year? And what are we doing to keep our students successful? Anyone else?
Anyone else? Going once? When you get that timer on, that's when. <laughs> right, Paula? <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to speak, but a couple, just a couple of points. Paula O'Brien, Pondview Drive. Um, I keep hearing that it was a low voter turnout. There were over 700 and four, there were 714 more voters this year than last year. Um, that's one point I want to make. And the kids do deserve a great education. I, my three kids went through the school. I went through the Scarborough school system. The thing I have. Um, a problem with is we're not we and you know there's those that put us through school too our parents our kids grandparents and someone needs to look out for them um, recently I, I suffered the loss of my dad so you know senior couples when they retire they have two Social Security incomes when one of them passes away then they go down to one income they're minus one whole check, but all their bills remain the same except for what goes up every year. Um, it also wasn't just seniors that voted against the budget. I know several people around town, including a couple of single mothers and and one um, mother of a one one boy said to me, "You know, I want the best for my son too, but if I can't afford these increases every year, what good does it do me?" You know, I. I I just think that uh, in the property value, as far as the increase, decrease of the property value, that's only relevant, as I've said before, if you're selling. And a lot of these senior citizens and my friends' parents and mine, they don't want to sell. They, they want to live out their life in the home they have and be able to afford to do so. Um, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Hello, I'm Hugh Morganbesser. I live at Two Hope Lane here in Scarborough. And um, yeah, or actually, uh, thanks again. Other people said that and I got to speak to you guys last week and I don't think I said that, so thank you. Um, and I'm really just gonna uh, reiterate again uh, my feelings that, the, uh, that a strong school budget is essential to uh, having a vital, healthy town. Obviously, we have to make uh, compromises to, to balance all of the books so that we can uh, stay afloat. And, uh, and clearly, there was uh, in, there's a movement towards decreasing the proposed 3.5% uh, increase down. And, and I think it was a, a sensible, uh, I think a sensible compromise is a 3% increase. Um, just to address some of the points, uh, again, I think that although it was a high turnout, I think um, relative to past year, it was still overall a low turnout and really uh, at, at, there's a lot of voices that weren't expressed and, and it's, I hope that uh, we'll see more voices out at the, at the vote this next time around uh, because that's really the best way to, to find out uh, what, the, what the whole town feels and I wish there were a way to get 100% participation but we'll see what we can get. And, and I believe that there'll be a, a strong turnout. I think that the um, uh, the the signs that were around town, I think, led many people to think that there was a, a greater proposed tax increase than was actually being proposed. So I do think that uh, some of those votes would not have gone that way had they understood. Uh, they may not even have, have even voted, and we might have seen a more normal turnout. So um, anyway, I, uh, I thank you guys for doing the hard job of of uh, uh, of coming up with a new proposal, and um, and I'll do my best to uh, advocate for. Uh, whatever you suggest um, in, in terms of getting uh, people to come out and, and vote. Um, and, uh, yeah, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Is there anybody else I would like to speak? Anyone else? Going once? <laughs> Stop offering that. <laughs> I'm trying to be polite. 
My name is Nancy Erb, and I live at One Pine Ledge Drive. And I'm probably going to be reiterating many of the points that were so eloquently spoken here. And, um, and most of all, a thank you to your service, because I don't envy you. Um, I do support the, the one town, one budget. Um, and I just want to kind of share with you some conversations that were in my household. Um, I have t a rising uh, eighth grader and a rising junior. I try to keep them apprised of what's going on in the town. Um, they know that my husband and I were both going to be voting in support of the school budget. Um, a strong school system is important to our family. Um, but it was interesting um, when I woke up the next morning and saw the, the news that we didn't pass and we were really just one of a few towns that didn't. I went downstairs and I talked to my children and I said it didn't pass. And my 16-year-old said to me, you know, that really makes me question whether or not I would want to buy a house in Scarborough and raise my family here when I get older. And so I ask you to consider that if a 16-year-old is thinking about those questions, what other people of home buying age are, and what are the long-term consequences of a town that really underfunds and consequently undervalues our, our school system. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <laughs> <laughs> Going once, twice, three times. So thank you very much for showing up this evening. Um, just a couple of announcements before a motion to adjourn, uh, so we will close the public hearing. Uh, first is that um, I would ask, as is customary, um, on the council, if councilors could submit to the manager any recommendations for amendments um, by 8 o'clock on Friday morning. We would like to put those together and distribute those uh, early. Um, and earlier than we have in the past. So I would like to see those if you would like so that we can get them worded properly. Second is I would like to ask, unless I hear objection, I would like to recommend that our July 5th meeting start at 6 p.m. rather than 7 p.m. since it is a um, special meeting of the council. If there is no objection, we will make the announcement that it will be at 6 p.m. on July 5th as the second reading. So not hearing any objection, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there second. And all in favor. And that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming.